But first, and EU leaders have just struck a deal to ban most Russian oil imports. This is the European bloc attempts to deprive Russian President Vladimir Putin of income to fund his war in Ukraine. However, the embargo does contain a temporary exemption for oil delivered from Russia by pipeline. That is going to allow Hungary, Slovakia and the Czech Republic extra time to wean themselves off crude oil supplies from Russia. Let's cross now to Brussels to speak to our Europe editor, Catherine Nicholson. Catherine, that meeting has just wrapped up. We've just heard there from Ursula von der Leyen, also Charles Michel and also the French president. So can you just take us through the details of what they've been talking about today in regards to that sanctions package? Indeed, yes. Uh, these EU leaders uh, celebrating, I think we can say, the fact that uh, the 27 leaders of the EU member states uh, did manage to come together around this sixth EU sanctions package against Russia uh, since February 24th when Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Uh, President Macron uh, stopping to give a few comments on his way out of the summit. Uh, again, joining in with that, uh, that, the, that uh, sort of celebration, if we can say that, of those sanctions. He said that, you know, uh, just a couple of months ago, this might have been unthinkable. And he said that by the end of the year, 92% of uh, the EU's oil imports from Russia will be stopped. Now, this is because the EU is stopping all imports of Russian oil coming into the EU by sea. And uh, even though there's an exemption for imports of oil via pipeline, via land, Germany and Poland, two of the biggest importers of Russian oil by pipeline, have said that they will not use that exemption, that they will entirely cut off those Russian gas uh, and sorry oil taps uh, into their countries, uh, making a significant reduction in oil exports for Vladimir Putin into the EU of 92 uh, percent. President Macron also talking about uh, giving financial support to Ukraine, nine billion euros investing more in European defence as well, a particular area of interest for Emmanuel Macron for quite some time. He's talking as well with this move away from Russian fossil fuels of how the EU is going to power itself. There's a sort of package of measures that the European Commission's been pushing forward called Repower EU, uh, talking about uh, moving into renewables, helping states that are going to have to entirely dismantle some infrastructure that only exists to handle uh, Russian uh, oil imports, for example. There's an oil refinery in Germany, for example, that is only set up to deal with Russian oil imports. So uh, President Macron going into quite some detail about these really wide ranging repercussions of all of these different measures that the EU is taking uh, in support of Ukraine, as Macron said, wanting to support Ukraine without actually getting involved militarily in that war. And as well as this historic deal in order to cut uh, oil supplies from Russia, the leaders have also been talking about food shortages being caused by the war in Ukraine. Mm. Yes, this has been quite a, a big and I'd say significant part of the discussion. The uh, talk about food shortages caused uh, really outside of the European Union. Russia and Ukraine between them uh, produce in normal times about a third of the world's entire wheat supply. There's also supplies of uh, sunflower oil, cooking oil, other grains, other cereals from Russia and Ukraine that have been drastically disrupted by the war. So President Macron telling us that the European Union is going to work together with Turkey and also with the United Nations on trying to get out 20 million tons of grains and cereals that are currently held up in Ukraine. Uh, Turkey, a key player, of course, because of its geographical positioning uh, on the Black Sea. Uh, also talking as well about stopping certain states from stockpiling food and uh, allowing it to flow out to places where there is immediate need right now. And also talking a bit more in the medium to long term about helping African states to, to produce more. This uh, inspired in large part by an intervention uh, via video this morning by Maki Sal, the president of the African Union, who underlined uh, the dire need that several hundred million Africans are finding themselves in at this point uh, with their, their problems that existed before this war, certainly drastically exacerbated by the war, by the food export uh, problems that we've been seeing. Catherine Nicholson reporting there from Brussels. Thank you.